As we have seen, whether or not a particular institution or individual qualifies as an organ of a state, is not determined by international law, but by the internal law of each state. It is inconceivable that the armed forces of a state could be considered as anything but organs of that state. They are indeed the epitome of the governmental authority of any state. Even if it was not the case, state armed forces could undoubtedly be considered as an entity which, in the sense of Article 5 of the Articles on State Responsibility, is empowered by the law of the state to exercise elements of the governmental authority. As a result, the conduct of the armed forces of a state, including violations of IHL, is attributable to that state. However, such attribution is only possible if the armed forces act in their official capacity, as required by Article 7 of the Articles on State Responsibility. It should be noted that IHL contains an specialis in this regard. There is indeed a special rule, only applicable in international armed conflicts, according to which even acts committed by members of state armed forces and their private capacity may lead to the responsibility of the states for which they are fighting. That leg specialis is provided under both Article 3 of the 1907 Hague Convention and Article 91 of Additional Protocol 1 according to which any belligerent party shall be responsible for all acts committed by persons forming part of its armed forces. All acts means even those performed against the orders of commanding officers, but also in an unofficial capacity. Take the example of state armed forces based in a military camp and being involved in an international armed conflict. A member is temporarily on leave and is authorized to go outside of the camp. If the soldier commits rape while on leave, this may amount to a violation of IHL. Although this act was not committed by the soldier in his official capacity, the violation of IHL is attributable to the state. It is a very significant extension of the responsibility of state for the conduct of its armed forces. This is based on the idea that states' armed forces are characterized by a strict internal discipline, with soldiers being expected to closely follow orders given by their superiors. This clearly obliges state to exercise a permanent and strong control over the troops.